Section One of Jim of the Hills: A Story in Rhyme. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Son of the Exiles. Jim of the Hills: A Story in Rhyme by C. J. Dennis. Section One. Swingin' Douglas Footnote Douglas, the Bushman's Axe, so called after a famous maker. Swingin' Douglas There's a breeze about the mountain, it is singin' in the trees, a song to mock the little men who choose to live at ease, or play at toil or pleasure where their fellows crowd and push, but put me good axe in me hand and leave me in the bush. And it's hey boy, hi boy, heave it in the wood. Oh, the green bush is around us and the smell of it is good. The great bush is before us and a giant's task to do. And hardy men and hefty men alone may see it through. So it's ho boys, hey boys, swing it with a will. For the saws are howling hungry for logs down at the mill. The hope for man is honest work, and out of doors his place, the good brown earth beneath him, and the clean breeze in his face. The work for man is with his hands, his muscles strong as steel, when health and strength within him make him feel as he should feel. Oh, it's hey, boys, shake her up, twenty logs to get, the tail rope's failed a sapling, and the boss is in a sweat. He's swearing like a trooper for their fallen grubby wood. The boy has broke the whistle string, which isn't for his good. But it's ho, boy, slog along, watch her when she goes, and ringin' down the gully runs the echo of the blows. High above us on the hilltop where the tall trees rake the sky, the cockatoos are craking and the crimson parrots cry. Far below us where the sawdust by the mill is gleaming brown comes the dronin' of the twin saws while the boys are breaking down. And it's ho, boys, let her go, watch her how she sways. And the logging truck goes lurching down the crazy wooden ways. With the driver at the brake rope, oh, that truckie has a nerve. And he owls a merry hoopla as she swings around a curve. Then it's hey boys, plug along, feed the greedy mill. We have fed her logs in dozens, but she's shrieking for em still. When you test the strength that's in you, oh, it's good to be alive. In the green bush, the clean bush, and with your fellows strive. There's Simon of the snigging gang in trouble with his log. And he slews her with a cant hook as she wallows in a bog. But it's hey boys, steady boys, haul away the slack, and the shackled giant snakin' down the deeply furrowed track. Now the bossy swears to heaven that the timbers all be witched, and Simon toils like seven men to get the tackle hitched. And it's ho boys, right away, slew her at the nose. And the old winch coughs and clatters every time the whistle blows. The crowded world may call at times, but here I'd rather be With the strong men, the brown men, who work along with me. With the good tan on their faces and the clear look in their eyes That come to men who ply their trade beneath the open skies. The rough men, the straight men, with coarse words on the tongue. And hearts that work can never break, and minds that must keep young. Oh, it's swingin', swingin', Douglas, with a strength you glory in, Where willin' hands are honoured hands, and shirkin' is the sin. And it's high boys, clear boys, more to feed the mill, And the great tree whistles downward to a crash that shakes the hill. End of section one. Recording by Son of the Exiles Section 2 
of Jim of the Hills, a story in rhyme by C. J. Dennis. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Son of the Exiles. A lonely man. When I'm out among the fellows with the work to hold me mind, then there's heaps of joy in livin', and the world seems awful kind. Awful kind and awful jolly, with no trace of melancholy, and I tell myself the bloke that don't enjoy it must be blind. When I'm out among the fellows, but when I'm sittin' here, dreamin' by me lonely fireside, then the world gets kinda queer. I suppose it's how you take it, what they call the point of view, and a man don't look for dreamin' when there's work for him to do. But he can't be ever toiling, and at times he gets to spoiling all the joy the day has brought him when he lets the black thoughts through. I suppose it's livin' lonely, as a feller never should, for a lonely man gets broodin', and the broodin' isn't good. It's never good, the saying is, for man to live alone. But tain't because I like it that I'm batchin' on me own. For a bloke must take what's goin', and my life ain't all been growin'. Daffodils and hummin' dance tunes just to give me soul a tone. It's muscle that I've had to grow since days when I was small. And all the music that I've made is with the axe and maul. When folks are poor and toil is hard and times are harder still, a boy soon learns the use of time if he would eat his fill. Long before I'd finished schooling, I had put aside me foolin', till now at thirty and a bit I'm workin' at a mill. It isn't much, but then me folks knew that me chance was dim, or they might have named me Reginald instead of just plain Jim. Just Jim the Hatter, lonely Jim, the bloke that don't say much. I've heard how people talk of me, the gossipers and such. And they say I'm slow at givin', but I've got me way of livin', and I've got me bit of farmland and an house that ain't a hutch. And though it hurts if this man sneers or that misunderstands, I'm proud to know that all I've got was earned with my two hands. Suppose I don't go gay at times and throw around the cash. It's knowin' want that frightened me from gettin' over rash. I know I'm keen on savin', but the pinchin' and the slavin' and the starvin' in the old days keeps a man from bein' flash. I never treated neighbours mean or grudged a mate a pound, but I ain't out to buy loud cheers by flingin' it around. And after all, well, I don't know, it sums up much the same. No matter how a man has lived, no matter what his aim. If it's savin', if it's spendin', all his life is just a blendin' of the gay days and the grey days, and he's got to play the game. So where's the use of grumblin' if the game don't suit you bent? I tells meself all this at night, and yet I ain't content. There's days that sometimes comes to me when toilin's simple bliss, and every little job becomes a joy I wouldn't miss. When the labour seems like playin', and I catch meself a sayin', why, it's grand to think a man gets paid for doin' things like this. But after come the lonely night when I've looked back and said, to think I have to slave like that, to earn a bit of bread. When I'm out among the fellas, oh, the world's a place to prize, but here beside me lonely fire, the glamour of it dies. Sitting here I take to getting gloomy views of things and frettin', till me dog looks up and wonders with a question in his eyes. He's been me mate for years and years, and things that folk don't see, both good and bad has been thrashed out by my old dog and me. Well, he knows he's safe for sharing while I've got a bite and sup. When I'm fit, he's full of frolic, laughing like a silly pup. Out for fun, 
but when i'm feelin sad at night he just comes stealin to the fire and stretches out there with his brown eyes lookin up lit with such a queer soft sadness that i feel it isn't fair me own private little worries spoils the evening for the pair here to-night i've sat and told him while his tail flopped on the floor of particular conditions that have got me feelin sore and me present little worry is the matter of ben murray and his sudden like attentions to the widow at the store i ain't nothin to the widow as ben murray ought to see but i hear he's talked fight lately with some reference to me i ain't nothin to the widow not as yet at any rate though a bloke can't be dead certain what is like to be his fate but i own that i've been thinkin and there ain't no use in blinkin at the fact a man must settle down before it gets too late i ain't nothin to the widow don't know that i ever will seems to me it's awful reckless takin lifelong chances still me and my old dog's been talkin quite a bit of love and things weighin matters and we reckon this here love is full of stings fuller than a stingin nettle if a feller wants to settle he needs solid care and comfort not the stuff the poet sings lovin all that talk we reckon is a silly sort of fake what's a plain man wantin further if his wife can wash and bake i ain't nothin to the widow neither is ben murray though and he won't find me unwillin if he wants a little go i'm not over keen on fightin but he's boastin and he's skitin puts me back up and he's sneerin often gets down pretty low course the widow's never mentioned that's to say by name outright but i know what's gnawin at him when i hear he's talkin fight talkin fightin actin ugly not real earnest half and half shootin sneers into his smilin slingin spite into his chaff though a fight i'm never shirkin when i'm with the fellers workin i can give him good as he does and just take it with a laugh but at evenin when i'm broodin i chew over all the lot till his jokes swell into insults and his hintin makes me hot he can have it if he wants it he won't be too long denied but i've heard he's mentioned fivers wants to fight five pounds a side if i'm licked of course i lose it and that fool'll go and booze it throw it clean into the gutter with the other cash he's shied i've been told to-day he's sayin that his fiver saves his skin wonder what he meant the blighter that should make the fellers grin jumpin moses he can have it anywhere and any when fivers let him talk of fivers holy wolf i'll make it ten he'll get fightin too in plenty if he likes i'll make it twenty we shall see whose skin is safest and whose hide is toughest then i ain't got no grudge against him only what the rotters said i ain't nothin to the widow here old dog we'll get to bed end of section two recording by son of the exiles section three of jim of the hills a story in rhyme by c j dennis this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by son of the exiles a morning song the thrush is in the wattled tree and oh you pretty dear he's callin to his little wife for all the bush to hear he's wantin all the bush to know about his charmin hen he sings it over fifty times and then begins again for it's mornin mornin the world is wet with dew with tiny drops a twinkle where the sun comes shinin through 
The thrushes in the wattle tree, red robins underneath, The little blue caps dodgin' in an' out amongst the heath. An' they're singin', boy, they're singin' like they'd bust themselves to bits, While up above old Laughin' Jack is havin' forty fits. For it's mornin', mornin', the leaves are all a-shine, There's treasure all about the place, an' all of it is mine. Oh, it's good to be a wealthy man, it's grand to be a king, With mornin' on the forest land and joy in everything. It's fine to be an healthy man with healthy work to do In the singin' land, the clean land, washed again with dew. When sunlight slants across the trees and birds begin to sing, Then kings may snore in palaces, but I'm awake and king but the king must cook his breakfast and the king must sweep the floor then out with axe on shoulder to his kingdom at the door his old dog sportin on ahead his troubles all behind and joy mixed in the blood of him because the world is kind for it's mornin mornin time to out and strive oh there's not a thing i'm askin else but just to be alive it's cranky moods a man will get and funny ways of mind for i've a memory of one whose thoughts were all unkind who sat and brooded through the night beside the blazing log his home a mirthless silent house his only pal a dog but it's mornin mornin i nurse no thought but praise i've more good friends than i could count though i should count for days me friends are in the underbrush me friends are in the trees and merrily they welcome me with mornin melodies above below from bush and bough each calls his cheerful part and best of all one trusty friend is callin in me heart for it's mornin mornin when night's black troubles end and never man was friendless yet who stayed his own good friend ben murray he's no friend of mine and well i know the same but why should i be thinkin hate and nursin thoughts of blame last evening i'd no friend within but troubles all around and madly thought to fight a man for ten or twenty pound but it's mornin mornin me friend within's alive and he'd never risk a twenty though he might consider five but where's the call to think a strife with such good things about the gum leaves are a twinkle as the sun comes peepin out the blue caps in and out the fern red robins on the gate and who could hear the song of them and hold a thought of hate oh it's mornin mornin no time for thinkin wrong and i'd be scared to strike a man i feel so awful strong grey thrush is in the wattle and it's oh you pretty dear he's callin to his little wife and don't care who should hear in the great bush the fresh bush washed again with dew and me axe is on me shoulder and there's work ahead to do Oh, it's mornin', singin' mornin', in the land I count the best, and with the heart and mind of me, I'm singin' with the rest. End of section three. Recording by Son of the Exiles. Section four of Jim of the Hills, a story in rhyme by c j dennis this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by son of the exiles a freak of spring at any other time of year it might have passed but spring is queer he says something i don't know something nasty i says ho ho yourself he says and glares I says nothing, only stares. Coot, he says, then up she goes, and I land him on the nose. 
It was Spring, 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 just to hear the thrushes sing Would make a fellow laugh or love or fight like anything. Which mood called I wasn't carin', I was feelin' fine and darin'. So I fetches him a beauty with a lovely left arm swing. Ben Murray staggered back a bit and howled a wicked word, which give me feelin's of great joy, and that's how it occurred. On the sawdust yells old Pike, gloatin' and bloodthirsty like. On the sawdust with you both, truth to tell I'm nothin' loath. I peel off me coat and vest. Murray, with his rage suppressed, comes up eager, pale with spite. Glory shouts old Pike, a fight. It was spring, lad, spring, and the swallows on the wing made a man feel kind and peaceful with their cheery twit ring. As I watched their graceful wheelin' with a pleasant sort of feelin', old man Pike pulled out his ticker and the millands made a ring. There was gold upon the wattle and the blackwood was in bud and I felt the call for action fairly sizzling in me blood. Murray comes on like a bull, both his eyes with spleen a full. Let him have it left and right. Pike is bustin' with delight. Right eye once and left eye twice, and he grabs me like a vice. Down into the dust we go, bulldog grip and short arm blow. It was spring, mad spring, just to feel him clutch and cling. Told me plain that life was splendid and me strength a precious thing. On the sawdust heap we scrambled while the fellas yelled and gambled. On the fight and Ben loosed curse words in a never-ending string. I glimpsed the soft sky shining and I smelled the fresh-cut wood. And as we rolled I pummeled him. I knew the world was good. Tain't a dog fight, shouts Bob Blair. Stand up straight and fight it fair. I get end up with a grin. Time, yells Pike, and bangs a tin. Corners, boys, a moment's spell. Good lad, Jim, you're doing well, says the little dusty dick. Murray's eye is closing quick. It was spring, sweet spring, and a man must have his fling. Healthy men must be respondin' to the moods the seasons bring. That sweet air with scrub sense laden, all me body was invadin', till each breath I drew within me made me feel I was a king. Twas the season to be doin', fondlin' maids or fightin' men, and I felt me spirit yearnin' for another crack at Ben. Pike bangs on his tin again. Time, he roars. Go to it, men. I come eager, fit to dance. Ben spars cautious for a chance. With a laugh I flick him light. Then, like lightning, comes his right. Full and fair upon the jaw. Lord, the purple stars I saw. It was spring, wild spring, when I felt the sudden sting. Of a clout all unexpected, I was just a maddened thing, just a savage male thing ragin', battle all me wits engagin'. Instant I was up and at him, and I punched him round the ring. I forgot the sense and season, I lost count of time and place, and me only aim and object was to batter Murray's face. Pike is dancin' wild with joy. Dusty dick owls at him, boy. I am at him, fast and hard. Then, as Murray drops his guard, I get in one strong and straight, full of enmity and weight. Down he goes, the fellas shout. One starts Pike, then ten and out. It was spring, gay spring, still were swallows on the wing. And on a sudden, once again, I heard the thrushes sing. There was gold upon the wattle, and me recent wish to throttle. Murray, as he lay there groaning, was a far-forgotten thing. In the soft blue sky was sailing little clouds as fine as fluff. Wantin' more? I asked him gently. 
But Ben Murray said, Enough! Well done, Jim, says old Bob Blair. Tis the brave deserves the fear. And he laughs and winks at Pike in a way that I don't like. Widows grins young Dusty Dick likes a bloke his hands is quick. Now poor Ben can take the sack, but I frowns and turns me back. It was spring, fickle spring, and a most amazing thing came upon me sudden like and set me marvelling. For no longer was I looking for a wife to do me cooking, but for something sweet and tender of the kind that kiss and cling oh for such a one i'd battle and i'd win by hook or crook but it did seem sort of foolish to go fightin for a cook standin on the sawdust heap i feel mean and rather cheap widows let the widow go what we fought for i don't know murray offers me his hand Jim, you've won, so understand. I don't mean to block your road, but I answer, that be blowed. Why, it's spring, man, spring, and I give his fist a ring. If you reckon me your rival, give up thinking such a thing. I just fought for fun and frolic, so don't you get melancholic. And if you've notions yonder, why buck up and buy the ring? Put some beefsteak on your eye, lad, and learn how to keep your guard. Then I put me coat and vest on, and walked homeward, thinking hard. End of section 4 Recording by Son of the Exiles Section 5 of Jim of the Hills, A Story in Rhyme by C. J. Dennis. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Son of the Exiles. Section 5 The Vision. Of things that roam about the bush, I ain't got many fears, for I know their ways and habits, and I've chummed with them for years. For man or beast or gully ghost, I've pluck enough to spare but i draws the line at visions with the sunlight in their hair when a man has fought and conquered it is good in many ways there's the pride in havin done it and the other fellers praise there's the glory and the standin that you get among the men all their looks are more respectful since i socked it into ben I was feelin fine this mornin when I started out to work, and I caught meself eye steppin with a boastful sort a jerk, with me head a trifle liar and me eye a little stern. I thought the world was mine for keeps, but I'd a lot to learn. Young Dick the Dusty wasn't half so cheeky as of old. The men were actin friendly like, but I kept kind of cold and distant as becomes a bloke who scored a knockout thump till just approaching dinner time and then i got me bump it's fine to see your cobbers looking at you like they know you're not a man to trifle with at least i found it so ben murray was quite affable and once he whispered me there's a certain something doing and he'll see me privately. I was working at the ripsaw for the boss had called me in from the peaceful bush and quiet to the sawmill's fuss and din, and there he put me tailin' out a game I never like. But likin' isn't gettin' in the bush, says Daddy Pike. I was working at the ripsaw, cursin' at me achin' back when i saw the blessed vision comin down the log yard track there were others in the party but the one that got my stare was her with two brown laughin eyes and sunlight in her hair more visitors growled old man pike another city push 
I'll bet a quid they ask us why we spoil the lovely bush. I hardly heard him saying it, for like a fool I stand, me eyes full of the vision and a batten in me hand. You gone to sleep, the sawyer said. What's got you mesmerised? I start to work like fury, but me thoughts can't be disguised. Oh, Jim's gone dippy with the spring, replies old Pike and grins. I turn to answer dignified, but trip and bark me shins. Next thing I know, the boss is there and talking fine and good, explaining to the visitors our trees are made of wood. They murmur things like marvellous and what a monster tree. And then the one with sunlit hair comes right bang up to me. I saw you fall, she sort of sung. You couldn't say she talked, for her voice had springtime in it, like the way she looked and walked. I saw you fall, she sung at me. I hope you were not hurt. And suddenly I was aware. I wore me oldest shirt. It never hurt me half as much as your two smiling eyes. That's how I should have answered her and watched old Pike's surprise. It never harmed me half as much as standing here like this with tattered shirt and grimy hands. But I just says, no, miss. Oh, no, I says, we're pretty hard and have to take them cracks. But just to see her sudden smile made me as soft as wax. You're strong, she says. I answered, oh, I'm pretty strong, all right. And close behind I hear old Pike observing, hear him, Scott. That finished me. I lost what little nerve I had and grew. Dead certain that I looked a fool and that she thought so too. She talked some more, but I can't tell what other things she said. I went all cold except me ears, and they were burning red. I only know her eyes were soft, her voice was kind and low. I never spoke another word except an yes and no. I never felt a bigger chump in all me living days, well knowing I was getting worse at every word she says. And when she went off with the rest, I stood there looking sick until I caught a chance remark of little Dusty Dick. What price the widows now, says he, I answer fierce and low. Were you addressing me, I says, and Dick was prompt with no. I don't know how I finished up, me thoughts were far from clear, for in between me and the bench, the vision would appear no other man chucked off at me but by their looks twas plain i'd lost a bit of that respect it took a fight to gain and when the knock-off whistle blew ben murray he came by and says he'd like that private talk but pickle it says i twill have to keep till later on he answers as you like soon after that i saw him talkin earnest with old pike if i'd been right i might a known there's something in the air by the way the blokes were actin but a fat lot did i care swell visions and the deadly pip was what was wrong with me i slung a word to my old dog and we trudged home to tea and after in the same old way we sits beside the fire to have a talk, my dog and me, on fools and vain desire. I tell him I'm a silly chump to think the things I do. And with a waggle of his tail, he says he thinks so too. I tell him I suppose she's rich, or so she seems to be. Most likely some real city swell, and he don't disagree. I says to him the chances are I'll not see her no more. Then he gives me a funny look and curls up on the floor. But I was slow to take the tip and went on talking rot about injustice in the world and boiled up good and hot. 
our spouts of wrongs of workin' men and how our rulers fail his eyes are shut but he just seconds motions with his tail all beauty's only for the rich all times and every way the toilers just take what is left as i've heard murray say when he's been talkin' to the boys about the workers' rights and spoutin' of equality down at the huts of nights. I turn the social system inside out for my old dog, though he don't seem much entertained but lies there like a log. I spoke of common people's wrongs, especially of mine, but when I come to mention love, I thought I heard him whine. But I went on and said straight out that though I seemed above such nonsense once, I changed a bit, and I believed in love. I said love was a splendid thing, then true as I am born, he rose and yawned and shut me up with one crook look a scorn. It's bad enough to be a bloke without one real close friend, but when your dog gives you the bird, it's pretty near the end. Ashamed, I sneaked away to bunk and fell to dreamin' there of a little brown-eyed vision with the sunlight in her hair. End of section five. Recording by Son of the Exiles. Section 6 of Jim of the Hills, a story in rhyme by C.J. Dennis. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Son of the Exiles. Old Bob Blair I got so down to it last night, with longin' for what could not be, that nothing in the world seemed right. For everything was wrong with me. Me house was just a lonely hole, and I had blisters on me soul. Top of me other worries now, the boys are talkin' strike and say, if we put up a sudden row, we're sure of forcin' up our pay. I'm right enough with what I get, but some wants more, and then more yet. Ben Murray's put it up to me. He says I've got some influence amongst them, and if I agree, which I will do if I have sense, we'll make the boss cough up a bit. That's how Ben Murray looks at it. I don't know that the old boss can. I've heard he's pushed to make ends meet. To me he's been a fair straight man that pays up well and works a treat but if i don't get in this game well blackleg ain't a pretty name this thing has got me thinkin hard but there is worse upon me mind what sort of luck has broke me guard that i should be the man to find a girl like that the whole world's wrong why was i born to live and long I got so down to it last night with broodin' over things like this. I said, there's not a thing in sight worth havin', but I seem to miss. So I go out to get some air and have a word with old Bob Blair. Bob's livin' lonely, same as me, but he don't take to frettin' so. And gettin' migraines after tea, he reads a lot at night i know he's hut as books half up the wall that i don't tumble to at all books all about them ancient blokes that lived a thousand years ago philosophers and funny folks what he sees in em i don't know there ain't much fun when all is said in chaps that is so awful dead he put his book down when I came. He took his specs off patient-like. He's been in Rome, and who can blame the old man if he gets the spike to be jerked back so suddenly by some glum-looking coot like me. 
At first he looks at me quite dazed, as though twas hard to recognise the silly fool at which he gazed, and then a smile came in his eyes. Why, Jimmy says, still feeling blue, kiss her and laugh. But I says, who? Why, who if not the widow, lad? But I says, widows ain't no go. What woman then makes you so sad? I coughs a bit and says, dunno. He looked at me, then old Bob Blair. He ran his fingers through his hair. God help us, but the case is bad. And men below and saints above look with mixed feelings sour and sad upon a fool in love with love go find her lad and be again fit to associate with men don't leave yourself upon the shelf it's bad for man to live alone hold on says i what ails yourself what are you doing on your own quickly he turned away he said that's neither here nor there he said I saw I'd made a clumsy break and tried to cover it with talk of anything for old Blair's sake. He don't reply, but when I'd walk outside, he says, "What's this I hear about the mill boys actin' queer?" So then we yarns about the strike, and old Bob frowns and shakes his head. There's something there I hardly like. The boss has acted fair, he said. Eight years I've toiled here constantly, and boss and friend he's been to me. I know he's up against it bad, stintin' himself to pay the men. Don't listen to this tattle, lad, and leave that dirty work to Ben. He tries to play on others' need. It's partly devil, partly greed. Ben's not a real bad lot at art, but ignorant and dull of sight, and crazed by these new creeds that start and grow like mushrooms overnight. And this strange greed that spread the more since the great sacrifice of war. Greed everywhere, sighed old man Blair, master and man have caught the craze, and those who yesterday would share like brothers now spend all their days snatching for gain the great the small and oh the folly of it all he tapped a small book by his hand two thousand years ago they knew that those who think and understand can make their wants but very few Two thousand years ago they taught that happiness cannot be bought. Progress, he shouted, bah, a fig, where are the things that count or last in building something very big or going somewhere very fast? We put the horse behind the cart, for where's your progress of the heart? great wisdom lived long years ago and yet we say that we progress the paint and tinsel of our show are more than at the old address are men more generous or kind then where's your progress of the mind i think bob blair's a trifle mad they say so too around these parts and he can be when he's real bad an holy terror once he starts dare say it's readin books and such thank god i never read too much i says i'm sure that i don't know where all this progress gets to now he smiles a bit and answers low maybe you'll find out lad somehow but talkin makes me old head whirl so you be off and find that girl I says good night and out I goes, but I was hardly at the door when his old specs is on his nose and his book in his hand once more. And as I take the track for home, Bob Blair goes back 
to ancient Rome. End of section six. Recording by Son of the Exiles. Section seven of Jim of the Hills, a story in rhyme by C. J. Dennis. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Son of the Exiles. Section seven, the wooer. I nearly fell fair in me tracks. I'm trudging homeward with me axe. When I come on her suddenly, I wonder if I'm lost, says she. It's risky on such roads as this. I lifts me hat and says, yes, miss. I knew twas rude for me to stare, but oh, that sunlight in her hair. I wonder if I'm lost, says she, and gives a smile that staggers me. And yet it wouldn't matter much supposing that i was with such a glorious green world about with bits of blue sky peeping out do you think there will be a fog no miss says i and pats me dog oh what a dear old dog says she most dogs are pretty fond of me she calls him to her and he goes he didn't find it hard i suppose Oh, no, I wouldn't, if she called. It's wondrous how the tracks are walled with these great trees that touch the sky on either side. Yes, miss, says I. She fondles my old dog a bit. I wait to make a bolt for it. There ain't no call to stand and talk with one who'd be too proud to walk a half a yard with such as me. The wind seems working up, says she. Yes, miss, I says, and lifts me at. And she just lets it go at that. She lets me reach the dribbling ford. That day to me, it fairly roared. At least that's how the thing appears. But blood was pounding in me ears. She waits till I have fairly crossed. I thought I told you I was lost she cries and you go walking off quite scornful like some proud bush toff she got me thinking hard with that yes miss i says and lifts me at but she just waits there on the track and lets me walk the whole way back and are you really lost says i yes sir says she and drops her eye I wait and wait for what seems days, but not another word she says. I pats me dog and lifts me at, but she don't seem to notice that. I looks up trees and stares at logs and long for twenty hats and dogs. The weather's kept real good today. I blurts at last, says she, hooray! hooray she says and then encore and um, gets me wonderin what for is this the right road to the height i'll tell her it's the road all right but that the way she's walkin ain't at that she looked like she would faint then i was lost if i had gone along this road and walked right on an unfrequented bush track too how fortunate that i met you yes miss i says yes what says she says i most fortunate for me i don't know where i found the pluck to blurt that out and chance me luck you'll walk she says a short way back so you can put me on the track i'll take you all the way says i and looks her fair bang in the eye later i let meself ride out and talked and told her all about the things i've done and what i do and nearly all i'm hopin to told why i chose the game i'm at because me folks were poor and that she seemed real pleased to hear me talk and sort of steadied up 
the walk. And when I'd spoke me little bit, she just takes up the thread of it. And later on she knocks me down by telling me she works in town. Works her? I thought the way she dressed. She was quite rich, but she confessed that making dresses was her game. And she was dead sick of the same. When goodbye came, I lifts me hat, but she holds out her hand at that. I looked at mine all stained with sap, and told her I'm a real rough chap. A worker's hand, says she real fine, and marked with toil, but so is mine. We're just two toilers, let us shake, and be good friends for labour's sake. I didn't dare to say no more, for fear of what she'd take me for. But just good-bye and turns away, bustin' with things I had to say. I don't know how I got right home. The wonder was I didn't roam off in the scrub and dream on there of her with sunlight in her hair. At home I looks around the place and sees the dirt's a fair disgrace, so takes and tidies up a bit and has a shave and then i sit beside me fire to have a think but my old dog won't sleep a wink he fools and whines and nudges me and all at once i thinks of tea i beg his pardon with a smile and talkin to him all the while i get it ready tellin him about that girl but shut up jim he says to me as plain as plain, First have some food and then explain. I don't know how she came to tell, But I found out her name is Nell. We gets our bit to eat at last, And just for spite he et his fast. I think that Nell's a real nice name. All right, old dog, I ain't to blame if you just as I go to sup, me tea I stop dead with me cup, half up and by the holy frost, I wonder was Nell really lost. End of section seven. Recording by Son of the Exiles. Section eight of Jim of the Hills. A story in rhyme by C. J. Dennis. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Son of the Exiles. Section 8. Red Robin. Hi, it's a funny world. This morning when I woke, I saw Red Robin on the fence and heard the words he spoke. Red Robin, he's a perky chap, and this was his refrain. Dear, it's a pity that poor Jenny is so plain. To talk like that about his wife, it had me scandalised. I'd heard him singin' so before, but never recognised the meanin' of his chatter, or that he could be so vain. Dear, it's a pity that poor Jenny is so plain. I don't know how, I don't know why, but this reminded me I was promised to the widow for this Sunday night to tea. I'd promised her for weeks and weeks until she pinned me down. I recollects this is the day and gets up with a frown. I was thinking of the widow when I gets me clobber on. Like a fellow will start thinking of the times that's past and gone. And while me thoughts is runnin' so, that bird chips in again. Dear, it's a pity that poor Jenny is so plain. Now the widow's name is Jenny, and it strikes me sort of queer that me thoughts should be upon her when that robin's song I hear. She ain't so homely neither, but she never could compare with a certain bonds of vision with the sunlight in her hair. When I wandered down that evening, she come smilin' to the gate, 
and her look is calculatin', and she scolds because I'm late. She takes me hat and sits me down and heaves a little sigh, but I get a queer sensation from that glimmer in her eye. She starts to talk about the mill and then about the strike, and then she digs Ben Murray up and treats him nasty like. She treats him cruel and cattish as them soft sweet women can, but I ups and tells her plainly that I think Ben is a man. First round to me, but she comes back and says Ben is a cad, who's made a laugh and stock of her and treated her real bad. I twig she's out for sympathy, so counters that and says that Ben's a broken-hearted man about the mill these days. The second round of me on points, and I was havin' hopes. I might a known that widows were familiar with the ropes. But he'd never make a husband, says the widow with a sigh. And again, I gets a warnin' from that glimmer in her eye. I says I ain't no judge of that, and treats it with a laugh. But she keeps the talks on husbands for a minute and a half. I can't do much but spar a bit and keep her out of range. So the third round is the widow's, and the fight takes on a change. I'm longin' for a breather, for I've done me nerve a lot. When suddenly she starts on love and makes the pace real hot. In half a jiff she has me on the ropes and breathin' hard. With not a fight inside me, I can only duck and guard. She uppercuts me with a sigh and jabs me with a glance. When a widow is the fighter, has a single bloke a chance? Her short arm blows are amorous. Most lovin' is a lunge, until it's just a touch and go. I oh, don't throw up the sponge. I use me headpiece here a bit to wriggle from the fix, for the widow is a winner, lest I fluke a win by tricks. And I gets a real mean notion that I don't seek to excuse when I interrupt so rudely with, but have you heard the news? Now, to a woman, that's a lead dead certain of a score, and a question that the keenest is unable to ignore. And good old curiosity comes in to second me, and I saw her struggle hopeless, and what news is that? says she. And here I spins a lovely yarn, a gloomy hard luck tale, of how I've done me money in, and I'm about to fail. How me house and land is mortgaged, how I've muddled my affairs, through foolin' round with racin' bets and rotten mining shares. I saw the fight was easy mine the minute I begun, and after half a dozen words the time keep counted one. And when I finish that sad tale, there ain't the slightest doubt I am winner of the contest and the widow's down and out. But not for long, although she's lost, the widow is dead game. I'm sorry, Mr. Jim, says she, for both your loss and shame. All things is changed between us now, of course, the past is dead, and what you were about to say, you please will leave unsaid. I was thinking in the evening over how I had escaped, and how the widow took it all the way she stared and gaped. She looked her plainest at that time, but that don't matter now, for plain or fair I know of one who's fairer anyhow. I tells myself that beauty ain't a thing to count with man, and I would never choose a wife on that unthinking plan. No robin was awake, I swear, but still I heard that strain. Dear, it's a pity that poor Jenny is so plain. End of section 8 Recording by Son of the Exiles
Section 9 of Jim of the Hills, A Story in Rhyme by C.J. Dennis. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Son of the Exiles. Section 9 Murray's Ride. I seldom get to hating men, nor had much cause to hate. To me, it's just a foolish game to play at any rate. But it kills the hard thought in you, and forgiveness is complete. To see the man you hated once, a maimed thing at your feet. We had a meeting at the mill, the boss has said his say. The good old boss who stints himself to find the men their pay. He told us, fair and honest, he was up against the game. Unless he got the timber out before the winter came. I'll say this much for decent men, and decent men they are. They saw the game that Murray played to give the boss a scare. We saw he'd pay near anything, and Ben would do him brown. But a fair thing is a fair thing, so we turned Ben Murray down. A truck was waiting in the yard, full loaded for the trip. Just an easing of the brake rope was enough to let her rip. For half a mile or more downhill, along a track rough made, To where the horses wait to haul her up the other grade. The talk was done, the numbers up, the boss had won the day, And we were ready to get back and earn our bit of pay. When Murray, in a mad black rage, goes on to rave and shout, You're sacked, the old man tells him plain, I've had enough, get out. For close on half a minute I expected hell to pay. Ben Murray glares around the mill, then turns and walks away. He stops beside the loaded truck, and each man in the mill watched Murray with a sidelong look, and each man wished him ill. I knew Ben Murray for a gab, I knew him for a fool, a decent man enough at heart when he was calm and cool. Wild rage had hold on him that day, and maybe madness too, and scorn in me changed to dismay at what I saw him do. He sprang behind the timber load and leapt up at the back. He loosed the rope to start the truck upon the downhill track. And if he meant to jump or stay, no man will ever know. If I go out, Ben Murray yelled, this is the way I go. Stop that mad fool, howled old man Blair. He'll wreck the track below. But now the truck has gathered way, and as we watched her go, Ben Murray with the brake rope slack cursed us with all his might. She took the curve behind the huts and then went out of sight. We found him near the wattle clump down in the little creek. His head was by a coral fern and blood was on his cheek and blood was on the wooden rails and he lay very still the man who half an hour ago had meant to boss the mill he's livin yet says old man blair boys we must do our best lay hold there jim and you young dick and heave that off his chest man buddy's crushed the crazy fool now treat him gently lad the truck ain't damaged much, says Pike, but gosh, he's got it bad. Red stains were on the wooden track and on the sunlit ground. A wagtail twittered by the creek and hopped and fussed around. The laughing jacks were wild with mirth, but very still he lay, as we took poor Ben Murray up and carried him away. End of section 9. Recording by Son of the Exiles. Section 10 of Jim of the Hills, a story in rhyme by C.J. Dennis. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Son of the Exiles. Section 10. The Reaper in the bush he was lying on his bunk in the hut behind the mill 
raven like a man wild drunk never silent never still best go in and say good-bye says old blair he's got to die god i never want to see any face so wrung with pain nor to hear such blasphemy ever in me life again white he was and starey-eyed with his hand pressed to his side now he raves says daddy pike he ain't wise to what he says never have i heard the like all me wicked livin days raise him up a bit says blair put that pillow under there raise him there now easy lad turn a little gently so you'll not fear it near so bad painin yes i know i know yes old man it's blair your friend boys he's very near the end soon a saner calmer look came in murray's strainin eyes though his body heaved and shook he held back his awful cries till another wave of pain gripped him and he shrieked again christ he called oh christ the pain boys you know i ain't a funk still he took the name in vain writhin there upon his bunk do you call him says old blair pointing upward he is there blair he gasps do you believe such as me is there a chance easy murray don't you grieve you ain't worth one single glance save of pity from his eye laddie pray before you die god i'm frightened blair says he boys you know i never whined where's the hope for one like me i ain't no him singin kind there was pleadin in his glance blair he says is there a chance old bob blair reached for his hand chance there is and certainty try to think and understand nothing's there to fear says he him the merciful the mild think ye he would strike a child think ye that he put ye here gave ye labour gave ye pain say your end would be a fear that you plead to him in vain nay dear laddie while ye've breath live in hope and smile on death with a hard hand womankind he pushed back the sweaty hair now then laddie ease your mind pain will end for you out there and the smile on blair's rough face was a blessing and a grace god says ben you are a friend friend old man and father too hold me hand right to the end they'll take notice there of you good-bye jim and dusty dick simon pike i'm goin quick with his eyes shut tight he lay his breath comin in great sobs and his poor lips seemed to pray as his hand held fast to bob's now his sobs and prayin cease says old blair god give him peace give him peace sighed old bob blair as he rose beside the dead but i caught his wistful stare and the muttered words he said god he prayed if one there be give such faith and peace to me end of section 10 recording by son of the exiles Section 11 of Jim of the Hills, a story in rhyme by C.J. Dennis. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Son of the Exiles. Section 11. Flames. It's human nature for a bashful bloke to bottle up and hesitate and doubt 
till grinnin fate plays him some low-down joke then in excitement he goes blurtin out the tale his sane mind never would impart so all the nearby world knows it by heart good luck for me the nearby world that day when i ran sobbin through the scorchin fern held few to hear the foolish things i say no one was there me secret thought to learn and i went shoutin down the mountain spur only the scared birds and the trees and her in fancy many men have been through hell tortured by fear when hope has almost died but few have gone through that and fire as well to come on heaven at the other side with just one angel in it safe and well a cool calm angel by the name of nell the day the fire came sweeping down the hill licking the forest up like some mad beast we had our work cut out to save the mill and when the wind swung round into the east and blew the roaring flames along the spur straight for the height i gets quick fear for her flat out i was with fightin all day long we saved the mill shed but the huts were done when some bloke weak with sprintin comes along comic it seemed to me the way he run shoutin that someone's missin from the height and all the forest at the back's alight i don't know what he thought and never cared when i grabs at his coat and starts to yell i only know that i was dreadful scared in half a minute more i guessed twas nell he tells me when and where they thought she went and of the useless searches they had sent i never waits for more but turned and ran straight for the spur along the scorchin track behind me as i went i heard some man i think it's pike fallin you fool come back what plan was in me mind i cannot tell i only know i want to find my nell next thing i mind i've left the track and turned into the blackened scrub me eyes feel bad above me head the messmate trees still burned and lord them awful fancies that i had i seen her lying there her face her hair why even now them thoughts give me a scare i stumble on against a red-hot butt i burn me hand but never even swear but keep on saying make the splitter's hut the splitter's hut get to the clearin there she's at the splitter's hut and if she ain't me heart turns over and i feel dead faint and as i plug along i hear some fool repeatin words till they sound like a spell i'm goin mad i thinks keep cool keep cool but still that voice goes on my nell my nell i whips around to see who he can be this yappin fool then realise it's me they say i must have gone through blazin ferns perhaps i did but i don't recollect me mind was blank but judgin by me burns there's something got to me that took effect but once i know i saw a flamin tree fall just behind but that don't trouble me i don't know how i reached the splitter's hut i only saw the ragin fire and nell me clothes were torn me face and hands were cut and half a dozen times at least i fell i burst into the clearin and i look she's sitting on a log there with a book i seem to cross that clearin in a stride still sobbin like a kid my nell my nell i was clean mad but as i reach her side i sort of wake and give that song a spell but by her eyes for all she seems so cool i know she must have heard and feel a fool 
why mr jim you do look hot says she but still her eyes says oceans more than that did you come all the way up here for me coolness i'll tell you straight it knocked me flat by right she should fall sobbin in me arms but no there weren't no shrieks and no alarms i pulls meself together with a jerk oh just a stroll i says don't mention it the mill's half burnt and i am out of work they missed you so i looked around a bit now that was good of you says she real bright wasn't the bush fire just a splendid sight she looks me up and down why mr jim she says to me you do look hot indeed if you go strollin that way for a whim whatever would you do in case of need that's what she said but with her eyes she sent more than her thanks and i was quite content i seen her home or rather she seen me for i was weak and fumbled in me stride but when we reached the height i seen that she was just on breakin and she went inside i stumbles home well jim lad anyway i tells meself you've had a fine full day end of section 11 recording by son of the exiles section 12 of jim of the hills a story in rhyme by c j dennis this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by son of the exiles section 12 gray thrush gray thrush was in the wattled tree and oh you pretty dear he says in his alluring way and i remarks hear hear that does me nicely for a start but what do i say next but then the jacks take up the song and i get very vexed the thrush was in the wattle tree and i was underneath i'd put a clean white collar on i'd picked a bunch of heath for i was cleaned and clobbered up to meet my nell that day but now me awful trouble comes what is a man to say i mean to tell her all i've thought since i first saw her there on the bark heap by the mill shed with the sunlight in her hair i mean to tell her all i've done and what i'll do with life and when i've said all that and more i'll ask her for me wife i mean to tell her she's too good by far for such as me and how with lonely forest life she never may agree i mean to tell her lots of things and be real straight and fine and after she's considered that i'll ask her to be mine i don't suppose i've got much hope a simple country yob i'd like to have a word with blair he's wise is good old bob he's got such common sense and that he'd tip me what to say but i'm not nervous not a bit i'll do it my own way i seen her by the sassafras the sun was on her hair and i don't know what come to me to see her standin there i never even lifts me hat i never says good day to her that should be treated in a real respectful way i only know the girl i want is standin smilin there right underneath the sassafras i never thought i'd dare but i holds out me arms to her and says as i come near not one word of that speech o mine but oh you pretty dear it was enough lord save a man it's simple if he knew there's one way with a woman if she loves you good and true next moment she is in me arms and me i don't know where if heaven can compare with it i won't fret much up there why mr jim she says to me you're very bold says she 
Yes, miss, I says. Then she looks up. And that's the end of me. Oh, man, she cries. Oh, modest man, if you go on like this. But I interrupt the lady, and I'll do it with a kiss. Jim, do you know what heroes are? Says she, when I'd behaved. Why, yes, says I. They're blokes that save fair maids that won't be saved. You're mine, says she, and smiles at me, and will be all my life. That is, if it occurs to you to ask me for your wife. Grey thrush is in the wattle tree when I get home that day. Back to me silent, lonely house, but still he sings away. There is no other voice about, no step upon the floor, and none to come and welcome me as I get to the door. Yet in the happy heart of me I play at make-believe. I hear one singin' in the room where once I used to grieve. I hear a light step on the path, and as I reach the gate, a happy voice that makes me glad tells me I'm awful late. Now what's a man to think of that, and what's a man to say, who's been out workin' in the bush, tree fallin' all the day? And how's a man to greet his wife if she should meet him there? But Grey Thrush in the wattle tree says, Oh, you pretty dear. The End End of section 12 Recording by Son of the Exiles End of Jim of the Hills A Story in Rhyme by C. J. Dennis